So Faith, thank yeah. you so much for coming on set. Thanks for having it's me. It's lovely to have you. It's been a while because we were supposed to get you in quite a while ago, didn't we? Yeah. My bad. I was in Greece. And, it's um, okay. Holidays life are happened. important. Life happened. Yeah. This was me taking an actual break and actually just stopping and slowing things down. And I'm proud of you for that. Thank you. I tried my best. <laughs> but no, honestly, thank you for, for doing this and coming on to share your story, your journey. I'm really excited to explore particularly your transition, your career change recently. Because um, I feel like there's a lot of people that will benefit it from understanding your why and even the successes along the way there's a lot of people mm. that do not change do not make those changes because there's a lot of fear around yeah. the what ifs the what nots and yeah. so if you could just introduce yourself faith and just tell us who you are and what you do right now okay and we're going to unpack that okay so my name is faith um but some people, well, my first name is Hiker, actually. Mm -hmm. So Hiker Faith. Um, what do I do right now? So right now I work as an engineering manager, right. career-wise. So that's what I've been doing since February. Mm. Before that, I was working as a quality engineer. Right. Um, and yeah, but the engineering manager role is a role that I was doing as a succumbent. Right. So it's a, it was like a trial. Right. Okay, let's see if you like this. Let's see if this is something you want to do in the long term. Okay. And it's really taken off. Um, yeah. So I've not been doing my quality responsibilities since, even right. though my job title hasn't changed officially. Right. Um, but yeah, now I just manage engineers. So you manage engineers. Yeah. So your last job role, was that within the same sector in sort of the construction space then? Yes, yeah, so it was it, it was still engineering, right? But it was quality engineering. So I, was, I would test whatever software the de developers would develop. Okay, right, yeah. I would test that. But now okay. I just manage the people that develop the software and test the software. Lovely. So just to clarify, we're talking about tech because yes. as soon as people hear engineering, you think like construction, yes. and civil, and that's what I just did just then. Even though I know that she's not working in that space, so <laughs> it's fine. People forgive always, me for being. People always look at me and they're like, "Did you study engineering?" And I actually didn't. Yeah. So let's talk about this then. So right now you are work functioning in the tech space. Yeah. Before you stepped into the tech space, where were you before? Healthcare. Healthcare, right? So how d how did we get there? So talk me through maybe sort of your degree, uni, into your first role, healthcare, and how you ended up in tech. Yes, so university, I studied biomedical science. Right, okay. So I went to university. Actually, I wasn't planning on going to university. Okay. Because I was like, college was really difficult. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no one's going to take me. I'm failing like yeah. crazy. So I was like, what's the point? I'm not mm. going to apply. Yeah. But I had a really good teacher. And he was like, no, you're going to apply. And I'm going to write you an awesome reference. Wow. And he did. And I applied and I got in. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe I can, dis I can do university. Mm. So I went to university. I was really anxious, but I got through, mm. passed biomedical science but by the end of my degree I was like okay this is cool yeah but I don't want to do this for the rest of my life right, right? I don't right. want to work in a lab for the rest of my life yeah. testing samples and yeah. blood and all this stuff mm. you know I was just like it's not really what I want to do right so I graduated university and I was like I'm going to be a photographer oh okay I don't know this bit about you Faye <laughs> I know <laughs> okay okay so I did photography you know, you remember I met you the first day I came to Liverpool I know I met you by accident yeah through a friend of a friend. Yeah, who you, I you came to yeah. my house. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> by, like the first day yeah. I came to Liverpool, I came to your house by yeah. accident. Anyway, so photographer. Yes, yeah, so I was like, I'm going to do photography. So I was telling my family, obviously I'm Nigerian. My <laughs> parents were like, no, you're not. <laughs> they were like, you did not do a three-year degree to In go do photography. Yeah. yeah. And at this time, like people weren't really like, you know, like now, like it's, it's common to just yeah. do anything you want. Yeah. Back then it wasn't common. Yeah. Back then it's like, you're crazy yeah, for wanting yeah. to do that. Like, like, are you trying to throw your life in oh, the bin? Exactly. So it was like, no, that's crazy. You're not going to do that. But I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll do it on the side. So I was doing photography on the side. Right. So I'll take pictures for people, birthdays, events, things okay, like that. Okay, fully doing events. Yes, yeah, okay, events. Okay. Yeah, I think I did like one court weddings. Wow. Yeah, like it was very random, but yeah. I really enjoyed it. But then I realized, okay, I don't really like the people business, you know? Right, okay. Like you send them pictures, they don't like it. You know? <laughs> Customers can be so long. Exactly. Okay. So I was like, okay, maybe photography is not the thing, but I was still working in healthcare. So I was still working in the labs. Right, okay. So I did that for four years I in two different labs, one was in that, Manchester. Was that a long and tedious four years? Very long. Because okay. I remember when I started my first lab job, I told the girl, oh, don't worry, I'm only going to be here. <laughs> For a minute. <laughs> For six months. 
Oh wow So when I was leaving the job She was like Wow it's been a very long Six, six months, months. <laughs> Wow Yeah Okay Because so, okay. in my mind Like I had I don't know in university I had just exposed myself To so many different things Right That I had this idea That I can do whatever I want Right, right? But that thing was still Developing in me So I yeah. didn't have the full confidence To pursue whatever I wanted Right So right. I was like Okay pursue stability But also things on the side Yeah so, so yeah, I did that for four years, pursuing stability, but I was pursuing things on the side, but I realized that life wasn't changing. Yeah. Like I'm still going up to the labs every single day yeah. and every single day I hate it. And then I had some experiences that really made it difficult for me. Right. So that's why then I moved from the Manchester lab into the Cambridge lab. So mm. I was there for 18 months. Right. Okay. So one day, so as a biomedical scientist, you need a portfolio. Right. I didn't have my portfolio. So I started my portfolio in Cambridge. Okay. And then one day I just quit my portfolio. Right. And then everyone was like, you're crazy. Mm. Because not everybody gets the opportunity to do a portfolio. In Cambridge. Yeah. And I was like, well, why would I commit to something I know I don't want to do? Yeah. Right? So yeah. I was like, there's no point. Like, okay, mm. I'm, if I if I go through with this, that's me saying I want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I already know I don't. Right. So I stopped that. And then a few months later, I quit my job. Wow. And people were like, you're crazy. Well, I didn't tell anyone, actually. Yeah, I yeah. just quit my job. And then the pandemic came. Ooh. And then I'm living in Cambridge. I'm paying rent. Right. And I'm high risk. So that meant I couldn't go back to work. Ah, yeah. So problem. now, yeah, problem. So because my plan was, okay, quit your job, but you can still work shifts every now and then. Right. Okay. Now I can't do that because I can't be in a hospital because wow. I could literally like get harmed from COVID. Yeah. Right. So I call my mom. I'm like, hey, I'm coming home. <laughs> and hey, I was mom. like, I was like, don't shout. She's like, okay. Yeah. I was like, I quit my job. She's like, okay. <laughs> I was like, and I'm coming home. And she's like, okay. Wow. So that's how that's how my transition into tech began. Right, okay. Yeah. So by force by fire then. Yeah, I had no okay. other choice. I was okay. like, okay, you're jobless. Now yeah, what's yeah. next? You know? And um, by the grace of God, I found a, a boot camp into tech. Right. So I did the three month boot camp and um, it was AWS cloud computing. Right. And that's how I got my job, my first wow. tech job. Yeah. Wow. And do you regret that change at all? Never, never, ever, ever, ever. Like I think that was when I learned that you must take, like to, to, to decide things for yourself yeah. is not a risk. Okay. To stay in a place you don't want, that's where the risk lies, right? Because mm. you're going to be miserable mm. forever. But when I say like, oh, actually, no, I don't want this. And this is what I want. Yeah. And, I, and I step forward into yeah. that. That's not, it's not a risk, right? Mm. Like that's me pursuing the things that I want. Yeah. So now I, I, I'm able to be like, you know what? If I don't like something, I can change. Word. I don't have to sit, I don't have to sit in it. I don't have to live with it. I don't have to be like, well, it is what it is. Like, suffer long. Exactly. <laughs> suffer long. And you know what people, there's this culture of like, you have to suffer and you have to find things hard. Back for, about suffering, you know, Faith, I'm too <sighs> soft for that life of suffering, you know. Me too. My mother didn't bore me for me to suffer. That's all I know Same. about my life. That's not Same. my ministry. Same. Like, and continue, it's your yeah, story, not, my, not my me. My parents and say, oh yeah, we're giving birth to this one so she can come and yeah, suffer this Yeah, like, absolutely not. No, that is not what we're here for. So yeah, I, I don't regret it at all. Like every day I'm grateful to God because it's exposed me to so many different things. Like right. I'm an engineering manager. I became one in less than two, less than three years wow. with no software engineering background, wow. right? So for me, it's like, it's crazy because mm. it's like, who does that mm. you know but mm. now I'm like okay I can do I can do anything wow maybe not anything but there's a lot you, I can do you can do what you want <laughs> there's a lot that I can yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. so and I'm just grateful to God for that wow that's that's so exciting especially in the way that that transition occurred because that could have been quite a I think where my mind would be at in that instance like you've just quit it's the what do I do with my life? Because yeah. we're not we're not fresh out of uni where it's like yeah. where you're just still trying to get a feel of the ground, feel of the market, like you yeah. know, just trying things out. Like we're adults now, so the consequences feel a bit heavier when you're making drastic yeah. decisions and it's a did I did I make a mistake? Should I just longed it out for six more months? Yeah. Um at which point did did you actually decide that you were gonna hand in your notice though? And how long from the point that you you decided did it take you to hand in that notice? Was that an easy thing? Because a lot of people take far mm. too long. To, like you've written it and yeah. you just 
don't hand it in, don't submit it. Yeah. What was that like? So it was February 2020. Okay. There was just thought in my head that I was like, you're going to quit your job okay. this month. And I laughed. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Behave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, but I started calculating. Okay, actually, the the year ends at the end of March. Right, okay. So that means that I can use all my annual leave. All this. I started calculating nice, like how much annual right. leave I had left, all this stuff, right? Yep. And what I did was I didn't speak to like my family or like even some of my friends. Right. Because I knew what they were going to say. Okay. Like people's automatic response is no. Yeah. Because that's crazy. Yeah. And very unsafe and yep. just not stable. So I was like, okay, I need to find, I just had conversations with random people. Yep. Like I'd have people at work and I'd be like, oh, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And right. they're like, mm, you know what? My husband was thinking about the same thing. Wow. And I was like, okay, so I'm not the only one that thinks these yeah. things right like yeah. leaving their job like other people have thought the same thing and yeah. other people are planning on how they're gonna do that mm. so in terms of time period I think February the thought came March I handed in my noise mm. I remember I was just walking around with it in my pocket <laughs> <laughs> for like a week it was just there in my pocket just and like creasing in your clothes yes yeah, literally like <laughs> and I was just like okay there was this one I, I was just I was too scared to pull my manager aside right and there was this one because I had three right so I was like oh, I don't want to collect all of them like oh come yeah. really and it was this one moment they were all in the lab with me wow. no one else was in there wow. and I was like if I don't do it now it's I'm not gonna, gonna do it and I was like can I speak to you guys and then the the top manager went are you handing in your notice oh. <laughs> and I was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then that's how I basically had it in my notice. Wow, yeah. okay. What was their reaction? They were just like, okay. Okay. I think they were probably just like, what is she doing? Yeah. You know, because I quit my portfolio like two months before. Right. And then for them, that was like, are you sure? Like career like, suicide at this exactly, point. Exactly, like yeah. what are you going to do? And I was yeah. like, I don't know. Then I handed in my notice and they're like, okay, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. Mm. And they were like okay mm. well we don't want to lose you so if you need more time we're happy to give that to you and I was like okay yeah maybe okay. I might need more time for me to like figure it out yeah, and stuff yeah. so they they were really like nice and okay. supportive they were like okay if you need more time like we're happy to extend your notice period yeah. all this stuff if you want to like still come in and work every now and then yeah. we're happy to do that because it's going to take a while to replace you anyway and yeah, we don't yeah. want to lose you anyway all this stuff so they were, they were quite supportive but overall they were just like what are you doing mm. like where are you going next type mm. of thing and to be honest I didn't have the answers because I didn't know I wow. didn't have a plan I had a plan I thought I did yeah. but the plan was messed up by COVID interesting yeah no one anticipated COVID like no one yeah you, you can't write this stuff do you know you what can't. I mean like yeah. it was just the, the wildest thing that could have happened in our lifetime yeah and I hope that that is the wildest thing that could happen I in our lifetime so can't really can't I, really be doing it anymore than the economic social because it's hard chaos out here. yeah yeah okay now my question then, comparing where you were to where you were at, in terms of the the work-life balance, the reward for your labour, how would you compare what you were doing in healthcare to what you're doing now? It's a really good question. I so life work-life balance is like so much better. Okay. I work First of all, I was working remotely for the first like two years of my career. Okay. I only recently started going into the office like right. twice, twice a week. Um, but even then, it's still very much flexible. If I need to finish early, I can. If I have a doctor's appointment, it's right. fine. Like it's, there's just flexibility, yeah. right? If I need to go and pick something up mm. midway through my workday, yeah. I, I can do that. Okay. I just inform my manager, hey, I'm going to be out for like an hour. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, that's fine. Right. You know, like what they care about is that you get your work done. Yeah. It's not about you sitting there for eight hours. Yeah. Like that's not productive. But as long as the work is done, as long as you're delivering, as mm. long as you're doing what we need you to do. Flexible. We don't care what you do type of I thing. Like that. Right? I like that. Um, whereas healthcare, it's just not, like there is no flexibility because you, you need to be there. Right, at like times. at all times, that like, samples are constantly coming in. You know, some of them are like stat samples, so you need to deliver the results as soon as possible. Right. Um. So you're constantly on. You're constantly on. Um. So that there wasn't much room for flexibility, much room for work-life balance in terms of, oh, I can just go on holiday in the yeah. morning. You know, like yeah. because I I have the time. Yeah. Like there's just no such thing mm. in healthcare, mm. and you have to be traveling into the labs every single day. Like 
working in tech, I don't have to go anywhere. I can, right. I literally wake up, I go downstairs, I go turn yep. on my laptop, I start work. Wow. Um, in terms of the reward, girl. <laughs> <laughs> There's a different. I, I, was, I was telling people if you want to make money, leave healthcare. Right. Okay. Like they say, be a doctor. That's nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but there's more money to be well, made. The doctors went to strike because clearly they weren't making they're, money. They're not money, making you know enough. I mean? They're not making. Like, I have doctor friends that are like, yeah. you know, you make more money than me, and I'm like, girl, come and join me. Mm. You know, um, my salary has without like, disclosing the salary. Can can you just give us an illustration of what your salary is looking like since you moved from healthcare to tech? Yeah, my salary has gone up. Oh, I'm really bad with percentages. Give us, yeah, like, just give us a percentage. It's a proportion. It's more than doubled. Jeez. Yeah, it's probably like three times what it was before. Oh my gosh, super hot fire. Like, or nearly, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and you've done that in two years, yeah. three years? Two years, yeah. Yeah. So if anyone's looking for a... Uh, for money. Job opportunity <laughs> that offers money, money. Do what Faith did. Yes. I always tell my friends, I'm like, listen, like, and and it's, it's weird because I kind of feel bad taking the money because I'm like... Why do you feel bad? Because there's people that are working and doctors and nurses that are slaving away and I'm just here... But running if you, data. But if you've identified an occupation that sits very nicely in the yeah. market and that's what the market is saying, if that's what the economy is saying, that tech is where it's at. Yeah. Look Again, looking at COVID, that COVID did that to tech yeah. in many ways in that moving remotely, we everybody needed tech. Yeah. So that I feel like there's a huge push in terms of the direction of yeah. the market. So if you've just stepped into the market at the right time, that's, that's nothing for you to feel bad about. It's that's true. just... Very nicely calculated it's move. True. It's true. Okay. That's really exciting to hear. On account of that, for everyone that's listening, what would you advise the person that has contemplated a career change or a career move, but out of fear have just not made that step or is still holding their own resignation letter in their pocket and going to work every day and cannot find the right moment to submit and make that move? How would you encourage them at this moment in time yeah that's a good question i think there's there's different types of people right okay so there's different categories of people that i yeah. think about leaving their jobs there's like the people that like in my situation that are single don't have families like okay yes i was renting but i had, I had the opportunity to move back home right then there's those that like don't really have that opportunity to move right. back home you know they might not have anyone like relying on them but yeah. still like they need to look after themselves. Yeah. You know, they can't just go and live on mom's sofa, yeah. you know. And then you have those people that have families and yeah. it's like, whoa, like my kids, yeah. my wife or yeah. my husband. like My they, mortgage. My mortgage, all of these things that rely on my income. I can't just walk away. Yeah. Um, I would say for the first person, like if you have the opportunity to just live on someone's couch, just go and do it. Yeah. You know, just quit your job, just go and do it. Like this is the time to yeah. do it. What you don't want is to get get to a point where you're you're in a situation where people start to rely on you yeah. and then you're like hating your job even more yeah. because now there's the ex added pressure of, oh, this income is actually there to sustain it's other your people. Lifeline. Exactly. Yeah. Like I actually have to be here now. Yeah. Like it's not a thing that I'm just doing because it's stable. Like it's a thing that I have to do because yeah. if I don't, other people will fall apart around yeah. me, right? Um, so I, I, for me, and that was what drove me because I was like, I don't have kids. Yeah. Like, I don't have a husband. I don't have a mortgage. Yeah. Like, it's just me. Yeah. I can go back home. And let, if I'm going to do it, let me do it now, now before all of that stuff starts yeah. to come. I think for those that do not have that opportunity, I would say take it a step at a time. Yeah. Like, find find what it is that you actually want to do. Yeah. Like, find ways, like, if it's evening courses that you would have to do, mm. do that, you know? If it's... Um, a course like every hour or like, I don't know, on during lunchtime, yeah. Udemy, all of these things yeah. do that. But another thing that's really good is like, even within your company, mm -hmm. if there are opportunities there. So what I tell people, especially when it comes to tech, everything has a tech department. Mm. NHS has a tech department, Asda has a tech department, like Lloyd's has a tech department. Right. Every single place you yeah. go to, they will have a tech department, yeah. right? If you want to transition into tech, you don't have to leave your company. Right. You can just say, hey, 
I know that you work in the IT department. Can I can I shadow you yeah. every now and then, Word. right? So that's an opportunity that you can take advantage of. I remember when I first started working in the labs, one of the senior biomedical scientists was leaving to go and work in our tech department. Ah. And I was just like, oh, how did he do that? And they were like, oh, he was just always interested in tech. And he was studying on the side mm. and he took a few courses here and there. And he was also like spending time with the tech team. Mm. And then he applied for a job and he got it. Mm. Right. And you're more like, you're probably more likely to get it because you already work for the company. Internally, people know you, yep. all this stuff. Right. So I always tell people network internally as well. Word. But that's not just for tech. That's for anything you want to do. Right. Mm. You just find places where they have that department. They might have it within your your current um, yeah. workplace yeah. and then take advantage of that mm. network with the people in, in those areas as well mm, mm. Um, you don't always have to leave or be extreme like find ways to take advantage of the little little opportunities that are around you the little opportunities yeah. absolutely Faith I'm not gonna lie you inspire many and there are people that are listening and thinking, swear down, yeah. <laughs> I'm quitting my job. I'm quitting today. <laughs> but thank, no, honestly, thank you for sharing that because I know and I believe that there are many that need to hear that because there are so many people that I've spoken to over the last couple of years, particularly that kind of aftermath of COVID, that are so dissatisfied in the jobs that they're in. But there are far too many people that are scared to just take that leap of faith and just pursue a change, try something yeah. different. And thank you also for giving that context though, that there are different demographics of people. So I'm sorry, but if you've got too many commitments, if you have children, wife, family, mortgage waiting for you, don't 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 follow faith. Don't. All right. And then say that faith said don't. and be with on a couch with your with your wife and your kids. <laughs> because faith be didn't tell you to do that. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. yeah, that that context is so important that people need to really understand the space that they're in, the capacity that they have to make those decisions. So wisdom is definitely needed. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, thank you, Faith. And where can nice. we find you if anyone wants to chat with you and ask for your thoughts, advice, if they're in that kind of space right now and they just need a bit of wisdom from you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn, okay. so Hike of Faith Addicts. Um, Instagram, Hike of Faith. TikTok. Hike of Faith. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's many places that you can find Lovely. me, really. Um, but yeah, I'm always happy to chat people fabulous we'll put that in the description thank you very much faith have a lovely Thanks rest for of having me thank you